This is my Forjao chuck. They call it a Forjao chuck because of... Uh, there is a little problem with this chuck. Nothing really important, but a little bit annoying. If I install a workpiece, like right now for example, I can insert here a thickness of one tenth of a millimeter, which is four thou. It's marked here. Which means that if I tighten the workpiece really hard in the chuck, what we all do automatically to try to center it, huh? as made it right, it leaves, of course, marks in the workpiece. And the marks are deeper in the back side than in the front side. And it also makes it a little bit more complicated to dial in the workpiece in the chuck. Because of the jaws are like this, the piece is wobbling a bit while adjusting. I think we should do something about it. I took a little bit of measurements and these jaws seem to be square. I mean the slot that's in here is square with this surface, which is of course curved a little bit. A little bit. These slots here, of course on both sides, they are all exactly the same for what I can measure good enough. So that's not the problem. But it's the T-shape that's in here, that slides in this slot. These measurements are a bit all over the place. And I think the out of alignment of these uh, surfaces here is because of the movement of the jaws in these slots. It's not much, but there is. So I think the best thing to do with these jaws is to regrind them, but of course not square, but the thickness of one tenth or of a millimeter on one side out of square. That could be a challenge. To regrind the jaws in my three jaw chuck, what I do normally, I use this ring that I made that fits in here. And then, of course, tighten it like this, which means the jaws are now held in place and automatically pushed a bit further outside. For this chuck, this works perfectly fine. The only problem is, of course, my drill press is not in very good shape anymore to do this. And for the forge jaw, this system won't work because it's not self-centering. Maybe this could work. I don't know. These jaws are of course hardened, but I have no idea how hard. But I have a broken carbide end mill that of course I broke myself without any help. But okay. For more rigidity I think I will try to mill it horizontal. So take this head off and put the end mill here of course in the horizontal spindle. And tilt the table at the right angle. If I swipe an indicator here, have one side one tenth of a millimeter deeper than the other one. Of course, if I do it this way, the top surface here will be flat. For the moment it's curved. But I think it's better if it's a flat surface. If I have a closer look to, for example, this part and many, many others, 
this curved surface leaves always very ugly dents in my work pieces. I really don't like. And in the cylinders, if I use a, if I have to turn a bigger cylinder, it also leaves marks because when you tighten the part is sliding on this top surface and it bites in the surface. So flat it will be. Instead of tilting the table, I just hammered the thing in place. So, because this side was biting harder than the other one, this side is now one tenth of a millimeter higher than this one. And I squeezed my part between two pieces of paper because this shiny hard surface was a little bit slippery. There was not much grip with the vise. Let's give this thing a try. Let's see what happens. Depth of cut two tenths of a millimeter. That seems to work. I will use an automatic feed. Right, what do we have here? You know what? I think that looks great. It's nice and shiny. Now that I know that it works, let's do the others. No right.
I think the results are not bad at all. So let's install It's maybe a good idea to install some kind of workpiece in here. Let's do. It's not running perfectly through, but I suppose for this test it doesn't matter. Right, let's move this thing out of the way. I take the same thickness again, one tenth of a millimeter for tau. Let's see what happens. This one doesn't Enter. No. No. So that's good. Let's try a thinner one. This is the smallest one I have. 15 tenths, yeah? 0 0.4. Uh, what am I telling here? Yeah? 0 0.04 millimeter. That's not much. It doesn't enter. Oh, here a little bit. Yeah, a very little bit. Here, nothing. Right. Let's take this part out again and look at the indents. It left a little bit of mark here, but it seems to be the same width here and over the whole length, so that's good. Here, same. I can hardly feel it, I can just see it, but uh, I don't feel it, so I don't think it's really deep. Here, same. It's a little bit wider here than here, but at least it was biting over the whole length. And here, more or less, same result. Before I started making this video, my first plan was to install the jowls here in the vines and grind them with a grinding stone that I prefer, preferred here. And that's why I said that it could be a challenging project because first I have to make a new arbor for it and I don't know if grinding on this milling machine will work and then the idea was to grind this way like this so I would again have the curve of the grinding stone in the jowls but I'm really happy my little test with the carbide end mill worked. It makes it a lot easier and of course I don't have all this grinding dust on my beautiful milling machine. So now I know and now also you know that recutting the jowls of your chuck is really not a challenge. So if one day you have to do it, just do it.